going on, Rev? How we doing? Wow, yes. Love that energy, sister. Come on, keep that same energy. Hey, everybody, what's going on? If you're watching with us online, hello. We are glad if you have decided to join in with us tonight. My name is KJ, if we haven't met yet. Hey, friends, what's going on? It's my buddy Madison over here. She's super cool. And we get to be a part of just hanging out and leading you in worship. We get to, well, lead with you. We get to worship with you. Every single week, we love to spend some time singing to Jesus because he is worthy to be praised. And we love to acknowledge that through song, you know? So we're going to sing it out together by all of you guys. Yeah. Love this. Love this energy right now. This is awesome. I'm getting camp vibes. Camp. Low key, high key, all the keys. Camp? Camp? What did I say? Can? You said camp. Cram? No. Can jam? Let's play can jam. Let's just Whatever. Play. Will, save me. Let's just sing some songs. <laughs> Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty prayers, treasures that fade, are never enough. Then you came along, and you put me back together. Hearing your love. Come on, Rev, let's sing it out together. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing yeah, better than you, Lord. There's nothing. And nothing is better than you. Show you 
we thank you tonight for who you are. God, that you are the real thing, that there's nothing that this world has to offer us that could compare to you. God, everything that we need is found in you. Hope, joy, freedom, comfort, our identity. And God, I thank you that you are the one that we can lean on, that we can run to when everything in our lives tells us that we're not good enough, that we can never measure up, that our circumstances are ones that we can never, we can never overcome. God, we thank you that you are the one who holds the truth. You say all of that is not true. You call us chosen, loved, worthy, accepted. And God, we are so thankful for this time and this place where we can come just as we are, broken, messy. Jesus, you know all the things that we've done, all the things that we will do. And still you see us, you choose us, and you love us unconditionally. So thank you for this time and this place where we can be reminded of that, where we can come together and lift our voices, give you the praise that you're worthy of because you are so worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy. So right now we just say thank you. We ask that you would just be drawing near to us. You'd be opening our hearts. You'd be opening our minds. God, I pray as we leave this place tonight, we would leave a little bit closer to you, closer to your heart. Jesus, we love you. Pray this in your name. Amen. Amen, Revolution. Thanks for singing. Go ahead, take a seat. What's up, Rev? Yeah. Hey, um, before we get started, uh, shout out to the Minnesota Twins. Come on. Playoff winners for the first time in 20-something years. That's exciting. Minnesota sports fans, we don't get much to celebrate. So Minnesota Twins, we celebrate you. And if you don't care at all, <laughs> that's okay. We're still glad you're here. I'm so excited that you are here. Welcome to what I truly believe is the best night of the week. And I'm so excited you're here because we're actually kicking off a brand new series tonight. And that series is called Image. Now, what comes to your mind when you hear the word image? Maybe what you think of is you think of like a social media influencer and you think of how they've got like all this carefully crafted content and they've got the perfectly edited videos and they got the photoshopped everything so they can portray a certain image to their followers. Maybe what you think of when you hear the word image is you think of certain celebrities who like done or said some messed up stuff. And then they hire a big PR firm and they issue a big public apology to try and save their image and not get canceled. I don't know what you think of when you hear the word image. Maybe, maybe you're a little more literal. Maybe when you hear the word image, you think of like an actual picture, like a digital or physical picture. But here's the reality. Every one of those things captures a little bit of what the word image means. And this concept of image is actually really important in the Bible. Because there is a foundational truth in the Bible about who we are as humans that really requires us understanding what this word image means. And here's the truth that we're going to be focusing on in this series on image. It's this. It's that you are created in the image of God. Did you know that? Some of you may have never even heard that before, that you, my friend, are created in the image of God. And some of you may have heard that a bunch of times, but you're still, if you're honest, you're like, I still don't really know what that means. And so my hope is that throughout this series, we can get a better understanding of what it means that we are created in God's image, but also so that we can understand how that truth, how the truth that you and I are creating the image of God, how that can help answer three of the biggest questions that we have in this life. The questions of what's my worth, what's my status, and what's my purpose? That's what we're going to be doing over the next 
few weeks together. And tonight, I really want to start by looking at how this truth answers the question, what's my worth? But in order to do that, we got to get just a basic understanding, once again, of what the word image actually means. Here's a basic definition of the word image. It's this. An image is a visual representation of something. Now, I know that's not mind-blowing, but at least it's clear. An image is a visual representation of something. So let's think again about pictures. We call pictures images, don't we? Why? Because when you look at a picture, what are you looking at? You're looking at a visual representation of somebody. For example, I got a few old pictures of myself that I'm going to show you. And yes, before you freak out, they really are me, okay? You're going to see why I had to say that. Here's the first one. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? That really is me, I promise. Some of you don't believe it. That is my senior picture. Seniors, where are you at? Raise your hand, seniors. Have you taken your senior pictures yet? Some of you are like, eh, well... Senior picture, classic, look at this guy. He's got his suit on, he's never worn a suit before. He's got a wrist watch, way before there was an Apple watch, okay? Sitting on a pile of bricks, I don't know why, because art, I guess. This is me, I'm 18 years old in this picture, okay? It's a visual representation of me. I got another picture of me, this next one, that's from my wedding. That is me on my wedding day. I am 22 years old in that picture right there. And when you see those pictures, here's the point that I want you to understand. What you're seeing is a visual representation of me. It's not actually me, though. Because the real me, I'm right here, standing here talking to you. And those pictures haven't changed. But I have, as you can tell, when you see those pictures, okay? See, some things have changed since those pictures were taken of 18-year-old me and 22-year-old me. As a matter of fact, my wife and I just celebrated 13 years of marriage, so a little over 13 years. Come on, you can cheer for that. A little over 13 years have gone by since that visual representation of me was taken on my wedding day. We've also had four kids since then. Oh, and also, all the hair on my head seems to have migrated to my face (laughs) since those pictures were taken, okay? Some things have changed. So the point that I am trying to drive home, I hope you catch this, is when we talk about an image, an image is not the same as its object, but it is a visual representation of that object. So when the Bible says this in Genesis chapter 1, when it says, so God created human beings in his own image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. What the Bible is saying is that God created every human being to be a visual representation of him. See, what I want you to catch, Rev, is that your original design was to reflect the divine. You were created to be a carrier of the image of God. That's a big deal. It's such a big deal, as a matter of fact, that theologians, uh, which are just like really smart people who study the Bible, theologians have used a Latin phrase for almost 2,000 years to describe this truth, and it's this phrase right here, the imago Dei, which literally translated means image of God. Theologians use this phrase, imago Dei, to describe how the Bible wants you and I to see ourselves as human beings. Carriers, a visual representation of God. We were created to almost be like a picture reflecting God to the rest of creation. That's incredible. Now, I don't know how you walked in here viewing yourself. 
I don't know what your sense of self-worth was when you walked into whatever campus you walked into or when you sat down to watch online. I do not know what your sense of value was, but I do know this. This world has a way of beating us all down, doesn't it? This world has a way of making us think pretty low of ourselves. And maybe, maybe your view of yourself is not so great right now. Like maybe you failed a test this week, and so it's got you feeling like a failure. Or maybe somebody got broken up with this week, and it's leaving you feeling unlovable, if you were honest. Or maybe you got caught doing something you know you shouldn't have been doing, and now you're in big trouble. And so how you're feeling about yourself is like you are a screw-up. Or maybe nothing big has happened at all, but you're just tired and exhausted from all of the demands of life. See, I don't know what you walked in here feeling your worth was, but my hope for you is that just hearing this truth, just hearing that you are created in God's image, that that would elevate your own sense of worth. See, I don't know what your sense of your own worth is, what your view of yourself is. It might be really low, but here's what I know. God's view of you is supremely high because he created you in his own image. And so what I want to do just for the rest of our time together is talk about two ways that this truth, two ways the truth that you were created in God's image can help you answer the question, what's my worth? The first way is this. It's that your worth comes from whose image you carry. I'm going to say that again to give your mind just a moment to process it. Your worth comes from whose image you carry. And when I was in middle school, I started collecting basketball cards. Anybody in here ever collected sports cards? Raise your hand. If you have, all of our campuses, any sports card collectors, okay, my fellow dorks, I love you, okay? I know. Collecting sports cards is, I don't know how you feel about it, but I got super duper into it. I mean, me and my buddies, all of our time at recess, all of our time at lunch, we spent comparing our collections, trying to make trades, having fun. And then I realized something. And I realized something that caused me to start taking collecting cards really seriously. What I realized is those cards are actually worth something. What I realize is those cards have value. Like I could make money if I do this the right way. So I got really serious about collecting basketball cards. I have a whole collection still at my house to this day. But what's really funny when I look back on it is when I was in middle school, which players I thought their cards were going to be worth money and how it actually turned out. See, I have a bunch of cards of this guy named Wally Zerbiak. Any of y'all even know who that is? Okay, adult leaders maybe. Almost none of you know who that is, do you? And you know why? Because he only played for the Minnesota Timberwolves first and foremost, okay? <laughs> and then he made like one all-star game. And because he played for the Timberwolves and he made an all-star game, I was like, oh, his cards are going to be worth money someday. So I got all these Wally Zerbiak cards in protective cases at my house. But I also had some rookie cards of this other guy. I wonder if you've heard of him. His name is Kobe Bryant. And I had some of his rookie cards. But guess what? Guess where those cards were? They were just in my collection with all the other cards. Because I thought Wally Zerbiak was going to be a big deal and I wasn't quite so sure about this Kobe guy. And what's crazy is not, when I reopened my collection as an adult after years of not looking at it, those Kobe cards are the most valuable cards I have by far. Why? It's because of whose image they carry. I mean, think about this. The value of a sports card. Think about what that sports card is made of, like a little bit of paper, some ink maybe. The actual material of the sports card is worth almost nothing. But some of these sports cards are worth hundreds, 
thousands of dollars and even more, all because they carry the image of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, LeBron James. All their worth comes from the image they carry. And the same thing is true of you. See, you have unsurpassable, inherent worth because of whose image you carry. If you were a trading card, you would carry the most valuable image of all. The Bible says this about how God created you. In Psalm chapter 139, it's talking about God. It says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. See, what I want you to understand today is that this verse tells us that you are handcrafted by God beautifully and wonderfully in his image. And because of that, you need to understand that your worth comes from God and God alone. And what that means is nothing else can take that away from you. Nothing else can harm the worth that you have. See, you did not earn your worth. You didn't achieve it. It was a gift of God that he gave you at the moment you were conceived. Your worth comes from the image you carry. Please don't miss this. Your worth does not come from what you do. Your worth doesn't come from what you wear. It doesn't come from who you're in a relationship with. Your worth is not found in what you look like. It's not found in the grades that you get or how much money you have or what other people think about you. Your worth cannot be determined by any of that because it's only found in the image you carry. It was given to you by your creator at the moment you were conceived. And so here's what that means. If your worth is not something you earned, it's not something you achieved. It also means it's not something that you or anyone else can take away. So I wonder if you've ever had a moment where you did something that you regretted. I wonder if you've ever done something that made you feel shame, guilt. And in that dark moment, you started to believe a lie because of what you did, somehow you're a little less worthy than you were before. If you've ever felt that way, you need to know nothing you can do can take away your worth because your worth doesn't come from you. It comes from God. Or maybe, maybe what's made you feel less worthy is not something you've done, but something that was done to you. Like maybe there's been hurtful words spoken over you. Or maybe somebody did something to you that caused you pain. But I want you to know no matter what you've been through, no matter what anyone else has ever done to you, nothing anyone else can do can change your worth because they didn't give it to you so they can't take it away. Your worth comes from God and God alone because your worth comes from whose image you carry. You were created in the image of God. Here's the second way that this truth helps us answer the question of what's our worth. And it's this. You can know your worth because of the price that was paid. You can know your worth because of the price that was paid. You want to know what the most expensive basketball card ever was? It's this card right here. It's a Steph Curry rookie card. And this basketball card sold for $5.9 million. $5.9 million for a piece of cardboard and some ink. Now, what in the world makes this card 
worth $5.9 million? It's pretty simple. Somebody was willing to pay for it. That card is worth that much because someone was willing to pay that price. And now, do you know that there was a price that was paid for you? Do you know that what the Bible teaches is that you have actually been purchased? Now, I know that might sound wild or weird at first, but just give me a chance to explain. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. Now, why in the world would God have to buy us? Why would God have to pay a price for us in the beginning? Well, the simple answer is this, sin. Sin is the reason that God had to pay a price for you and for me. See, even though we were created in God's image, what the Bible tells us is from the very beginning of humanity, we've been really bad at living out this truth. Even though our original design was to reflect the divine, the story of human history has been, we haven't tried to reflect the divine, we've tried to be it. We've tried to be our own God. We've tried to go our own way. We've tried to do our own thing and follow our own desires instead of following God's ways and trying to reflect him to the world. And so what that results in is humanity so often living so far below what we were created for, living so far below what our worth actually is. And because we went our own way, the Bible calls that sin. And what the Bible teaches is everyone who sins actually becomes a slave to sin. And not only a slave to sin, but also a slave to a very real personal evil that the Bible calls the devil. So the story of the Bible is we were created to be God's image, but we didn't do a good job of it. We went our own way. We sinned, and that sin enslaved us, and the devil actually had control of us. And what God decided to do was pay a high price to buy us back to set us free. The Bible says it this way in Romans chapter five. It says, but God showed his great love. His great love. See, God never stopped seeing our worth. Even though at times we forget our worth, even though at times we feel like we deserve whatever our bad choices have brought on us, not God, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. A high price was paid for you and for me. And here's the price. Jesus said this, for even the Son of Man, Jesus is talking about himself, even the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. See, when our lives were held and owned by sin, Jesus came and paid a price, a price so much higher than $5.9 million. Jesus paid the price of his own life by dying on the cross in our place for our sins so we could be set free. So my friend, whenever this world tries to beat you down, Whenever other people's words or whenever your own shame over your own choices try to convince you that you are not worthy, that you don't have value, what you can do is remind yourself, no, I know exactly what I'm worth because I know the price that was paid for me. I know what God thinks of me because he was willing to pay the price of his own son. Jesus was willing to pay the price of his own life the life of the one true and living God given in exchange for our freedom so that we could have life forever. That, my friends, is how you can never doubt again what you're worth in the eyes of God. You can know your worth because of the price that was paid. 
So where does your worth come from? Where have you been trying to find your sense of value lately? And how can you know exactly what you're worth? My friends, the more you understand the truth that you are created in the image of God, the more the answer to those questions becomes crystal clear. Because your worth comes from whose image you carry. And you can know exactly what you're worth because you know the price that Jesus paid for you on the cross. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. See, some of you, you've just never heard this before. Never heard that you're made in God's image. Maybe never even heard that every one of us has sinned and that sin leads us to death and that God bought you back through Jesus dying on the cross so that you could live forever. Maybe you've never heard that. But if you are going to truly live out what you're worth, if you're going to truly live out the truth that you're made in God's image, then you have to put your faith in Jesus to start a relationship with that God whose image you were made in. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around, I want to just invite you in this moment, if you want to make a decision to say yes to Jesus, to receive his forgiveness and grace that he bought and paid for through his death on the cross so that you can fully live out the worth that God has given you. I want you just in your heart to pray this prayer with me to God. Say, Dear God, I need you. Thank you for the worth that you've given me. But I've made mistakes. I've tried to go my own way, and the Bible calls that sin, so I need a Savior. I thank you that Jesus died to save me. So, Lord, would you forgive me? Jesus, would you be my Savior? And would you be my Lord? Will you lead me and guide me for the rest of my life so I can live out my worth in your image? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer in your heart and you meant it tonight, I want to invite you to pull your phone out right now because we want to be able to follow up with you. We want to be able to help you in your new relationship with Jesus, in your new faith. And I want to invite you to put in, text the word life to the number 77888. So I want you to put in what number you're going to send that text to is 77888. And then in the text, text the word life to 77888 so that we can support you in your brand new relationship with Jesus. Can we just cheer and make some noise for anybody who said yes to Jesus tonight? I love you, Rev. Have a great night.